I will be satisfied tonight if you are glorified. Glorify yourself. Thank you, Father. And Lord, I pray that you will bless everyone who will listen to this message in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Brethren, I appreciate the Lord for this privilege that God has given me to stand before you and to bring the word of the Lord to you. And I want to celebrate my father and my mother in the Lord, Daddy and Mommy Gio. Thank you very much, sir and ma, for this privilege and for this platform that you are giving us the young ones. It is my prayer that the Lord will continually increase you in the name of Jesus Christ. I also celebrate all our fathers in the faith, all our mothers in the faith, all those who are supporting our daddy and mommy. May the Almighty God continually bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. This night, the Almighty God will be speaking through me on the topic, God bless you, part eight. With the subtopic, you shall be fruitful. I'd like you to speak that word of prophecy to somebody, or two people, or three people, and tell them, in the name of Jesus, you shall be fruitful. <laughs> tell them, you can stand to tell them, say, in the name of Jesus Christ, you shall be fruitful. Say it to another person, in the name of Jesus Christ, you shall be fruitful. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I want to take my text from Genesis chapter 1, reading verses 26 to 28. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over all the earth, and over every crippled thing that creepeth upon the head. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the head. May the Lord bless the hearing and this reading of his word in Jesus' mighty name. You shall be fruitful. I said you shall be fruitful. This is the word of the Lord to you and to me. And whoever you are this night, this is the word of God to you. Either you are a man or you are a woman. Either you are a boy or you are a girl. Either you are white or black. Either you are an adult or you are a youth. Or maybe you are children or teenagers. This is the word of the Lord to you tonight. God said, be fruitful. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you shall be fruitful. Very briefly, there are two things I like us to take notice of. It is very important tonight. Number one is that God is more eager and passionate about our fruitfulness. More than you are passionate about fruitfulness, God is more eager and passionate for you to be fruitful. In the word of God to man, where I just read Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, you can see that God was speaking in a very passionate manner. And he looked at the man and said, be fruitful. Not only that, multiply and replenish the head and subdue it. And not only that, move on to the level of having dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God spoke to man in a very passionate way because God is more eager and passionate to make man fruitful, even more than man is. And I want to 
to say that in the name of Jesus Christ, that word of God to you will become manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. God was indirectly speaking to himself because he had earlier made man in his own image. You are the image of God. If anyone want to see how God is, you see, we have not seen how God is. We don't know uh, uh, how God look like, but the if God, if anybody wants to see how God is, he should look at you. You are the image of God. And God created you and me in his image. And then he looked at the man and said, you are my image. Be fruitful. All of you trusting God for fruitfulness tonight. You are God's image. And God has blessed you and said to you, be fruitful. I'd like you to stand on your feet. Is there anybody here tonight who want to resemble God? Is there anybody here tonight who knows that he is an image of God? Stand on your feet. Lift up your right hand and say in the name of Jesus. Say, I am God's image. Let the power of the first word of God to me manifest. And I say to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that first word of God to mankind, which is to be fruitful, tonight it will manifest in your life. I said it will manifest in your life. I speak from this holy altar, it will manifest in your life. God will make it manifest in the name of Jesus. That is why, let us sit down. That is why in Mark, Matthew chapter 11, sorry, Mark chapter 11, the Bible says, reading from verse 12 to 15, during the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ, the Bible says that in his yesterday, he had just been honored. People spread their cloth so that he can walk on it. And they walk like a king. And then, verse 12, the Bible says, on the morrow, in other words, the following day, after he has been honored, he saw a fig tree. And because he was hungry, he moved towards the fig tree so that uh, maybe he can find something to eat there. Because the fig tree looked as if it was fruitful. And then on getting there, Jesus was disappointed. And that was the first and only place where he placed a curse on trees. And he cursed that tree, the Bible says, on the following day when they were passing through the same road, they discovered that it has dried from the, from the root. That is to tell you that Jesus Christ does not want what we present on fruitfulness to him. Jesus Christ does not want to associate himself with anything that is unfruitful. And that is why the Bible encourages us to dissociate ourselves from every unfruitful works of Satan. And then when you read Matthew 25, reading from verse 14 to 30, there was a, a, a man there. The Bible says that he was given a talent and he went and hid that talent. And when the master came, he told the master in verse 14, he said, you are a hard man. You are a wicked man. How did you give five talents to somebody and then two talents to another person? And right now, you, are, you, you, you gave me one. And because I knew you are wicked, you, are, you, are, you want to sow where you didn't reap, I went to hid it somewhere. You see, we have a lot of people in the world like that. And the word of the master came from verse 26 to 30. He said, your location from now, because you are an unfruitful servant, your location from now will be in the outer darkness. And then he placed that curse upon him. He said, carry him and throw him into darkness. A lot of people are living in darkness because they refuse to be fruitful. And I came to prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are in darkness because you associate yourself with unfruitful works, God will deliver you today. I said, God will deliver you in Jesus' name. Now, what is fruitfulness? I give you three definitions very quickly. Number one, 
fruitfulness is to increase somebody say increase and you will increase I said you will increase and number two fruitfulness is to be productive number three fruitfulness is to expand and to enlarge so fruitfulness is the work of God upon man to increase to be productive to expand and to enlarge you are a soil and because you are a soil there is a seed of God inside you that must germinate you are a, you are a soil and right inside you there is a seed of God and I came to rebuke every spirit of fruitless effort in your life that seed of God in you that must germinate will germinate in the name of Jesus Christ it will germinate why do we need to be fruitful why do we need to be fruitful number one we need to be fruitful because fruitfulness glorifies God you see nothing glorifies God in barrenness there is nothing glorious in failure or in sorrow there is nothing glorious in sudden death fruitfulness glorifies God John 15 verse 8 the Bible says herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so that so shall you be my disciple but when somebody live his life in fruit, fruit fruitfulness when you live your life in fruitfulness God is glorified and I want to say in the name of Jesus Christ you will be fruitful I said you will be fruitful when Apostle Paul was speaking in Galatians chapter 1 verse 24 he said and they glorify God in me he lived a life that made others to glorify God in him nothing glorifies God in barrenness and I speak to that woman trusting God for years and that man that is living in failure and disappointment tonight is the end of that disappointment all of you that has been weeping every month tonight is the end of that weeping if your amen can roar like thunder receive that prophecy if your amen can be louder than that of your neighbor receive that prophecy why do we need to be fruitful number two it is because fruitfulness help you to witness properly you cannot witness properly if you are not fruitful fruitfulness give you mouth to talk you have mouth to talk in your families in your places of work even in the church you don't have mouth to talk if you are fruitless you don't have what it takes to talk to convince people to accept who you serve if you are not fruitful in fact when a man is fruitful you don't need to talk too much because you already have a message fruitfulness is a message oh i said fruitfulness is a message your fruit is a, is your message your fruit is your message without fruits there is no message 
It is fruit that we make men to believe in your God. You don't need to talk too much to them. When they see your fruit, they will believe. God says, the Bible says, without signs and wonders, these people will not believe. God turns your mess to a message when you become fruitful. It is in the process of you becoming fruitful that God turns your mess to a message. Your waiting is not wasting, provided you become a message through fru fruitfulness. And I came to prophesy, those of you who don't have mouth to talk, because you are not fruitful, as from today, be fruitful! Stand on your feet, everybody. Say, Lord! Say, oh, Lord! Give me a message. Give me mouth to talk in my father's house and in my mother's house and in my place of work and in the church of God. All of you pastors, can you roar that prayer? Oh God, give me mouth to talk. Give me mouth to talk. Give me testimony. Oh God, give me mouth to talk. Your waiting is not wasting. If it becomes a message by fruitfulness, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are praying. Please sit down. Therefore, tonight, trust God be fruitful. Fruitfulness will make your word to be acceptable to the world. There are those who don't talk too much. My father and the Lord, Pastor Yadeboye, he doesn't need to, to talk too much. All of you know. Oh, I said you know. He doesn't need to talk too much. Why? God has given him a message. My mother and the Lord, Pastor Mrs. Folu Adeboye, didn't need to talk too much. You see, he doesn't need to talk too much. It's because God has given her a message. Those of you who don't have a message yet, and people can point to something in your life and say, what about this one? Say, you say you are a choir, and you say you are a pastor. What about this one in your life? I prophesy from this altar. After tonight, you will look for that battle, you will not see it again. Oh, that amen is no good. You will not see it again! Say, oh God! Oh God! Give me a message that will cancel my mess. Open your mouth and pray quickly. Is that how to cancel a mess? I thought you would pray more than that. I mess to message. Oh, Mashila Katali Brako Satya. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Sit down, God has answered your prayer. I said, God has answered your prayers. Those of you watching us all over the world, the Lord has answered your prayers. If you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. Now, what are the enemies of fruitfulness? There are some enemies of fruitfulness. There are things that, um, even though God is more eager to make man fruitful. And number two, even though fruitfulness is God's command. He commanded man to be fruitful. You, you are commanded to be fruitful. You don't have choice than to be fruitful. And because you will not have a father, you will not have someone, you know, to use unfruitfulness to resemble here, you must be fruitful. You don't have any mother to use that unfruitfulness to resemble. Our mom in the Lord, she's fruitful. And in the name of Jesus, you shall be fruitful. But there are things we must pay attention to. 
if we must or if we will be fruitful we need to pay attention to some of these things number one is disobedience Isaiah chapter 1 Isaiah 1 19 to 20 he said if you be willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land if you are willing and obedient but if you refuse and rebel you shall be deformed with the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it you see Adam received the blessing of fruitfulness directly from God he was the first man and he received that word of fruitfulness directly from the mouth of God God didn't send a prophet to him he got it directly from God but you failed God through disobedience and his destinies was cut short there are those who said sin cannot take a man to hell there are those who said God cannot because of your sin discipline you God our God the same mouth he used to pronounce that word be fruitful upon Adam was the same mouth he used to curse him if you read Genesis 3 and reading verses 16 to 19 unto the woman he said I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee and unto Adam he said because thou hast akin unto the voice of thy wife and as eating of the tree which I command thee saying thou shalt not eat of it cost is the ground for thy sake in sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of your life and you can read it up to verse 19 he said in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground for the out of it was thou taken for thus art thou and unto thus thou shalt return the same mouth God used to pronounce blessing upon him was the same mouth he used to pronounce curses upon him let's be mindful how we live our lives there's a guy called Ephraim God blessed him and when he got to a point that he began to see himself as the one responsible for all these successes God use the same mouth to curse him a lot of people if care is not taken it is in that fruitfulness they will die that is how many people some people will die if God and mercy does not intervene on their case because the life they are living it is God that was responsible for their unfruitfulness a lot of people are coming to the church and troubling the pastor and it look as if it is the church that has trouble excuse me sir it is not the church that has trouble it is not God that is behind our calamities we are the one that is behind it God is said to bless us again tonight God has anointed our daddy in the Lord to pray for us and to bless us again tonight but it is in your hand if you must be fruitful instead of pressing forward in the service of God some are already contempt it is disobedient to be contempt prematurely premature contentment is disobedience to God some people right now it is now envy and competitive jealousy they are now seeing somebody that is riding a particular jeep by all means they want to ride it and God is looking what about the assignment I gave you some people that are supposed to be in the villages winning souls for the Lord they want to go to Lagos but I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ that spirit of disobedience it will come out of your life today if you read the story of Joshua it is very it's very worrisome in Joshua chapter 12 if you start reading from verse 9 
even before that time, you can start from first one. The Bible says that he got to a point in his life when he said, ah, well, we have also tried for God. Look at successes everywhere. We have, we have, we have, we have inherited a lot of land for the Lord. And he began to count his successes. Look at Joshua chapter 12, reading from verse, verse 9. And he begins to count all his successes. The king of Jericho, one. The king of Ai, which is beside Bethel, one. And he began to count them. The king of Jerusalem, one. He was counting his successes by one. One, one. I conquered that land, one. I conquered that place, one. And immediately, Joshua chapter 13, God spoke to him. Before it is too late, the Lord will speak to you. God said, now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, thou art old and stricken in years. And there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. And then, at a point, God began to help him to count. He was counting by one. God began to count for him. He said, this is the land that yet remaineth. All the borders of the Philistines and all Geshuri. And now, he counted by one. When God was to reply him, God replied by counting all. All. What about this? All. See, if all of us have made up our mind to be fruitful, we would have conquered the whole of Africa. We would have conquered the world for God. We would have conquered the whole of our villages for the Lord. If all of us have made up our mind to be fruitful, provided all of us caught this revelation, and then we made up our mind to be fruitful, we will win the word for God in no distant time but a lot of people are still living in disobedience number two it is sin sin every day every time a message at least is going on every time on on television on radio on the internet on YouTube every day messages are going on but what happened why is it that a lot of us are still living in sin and you want to be fruitful? Look at this guy that God wants him to shake the world for God. And God wants this man to win several thousands and millions of people for God. And this is the man that, that God wants to anoint to be the end time prophet and evangelist. He's living in sin. And God is surprised. Why is it that a lot of us are living as if this is where we will remain for life? Why is it that a lot of us are living as if there is no hell fire again? Why is it that a lot of us are living our life as if there is no evil again? Why is it that a lot of people are living as if there is no reward for faithfulness again? Sin, sin will not only rob you of eternity. But it will rob you and prevent you from being fruitful. Sin everywhere. First John chapter 5, verse 19, the Bible says, The whole world lieth in wickedness. A lot of people are in church today, but very few are in Christ. A lot of people are in the choirs. A lot of people are in the ushering department. A lot of people are sitting right now, but only few are in Christ. What about this fornication? What about this stealing? We lift our hands in worship and in glorifying God. We call it holy hand and God is seen as a feedy hand. We come to church. We sit down beside ourselves and then we hug ourselves. Mommy, mommy. Daddy, daddy. And right inside us there is envy. There is bitterness. If your neighbor is seeing what is inside you, he will run away. If some pastors or some ministers, if they dream, let's say it's a dream, that if they dream that they hurt with a fellow pastor in their dream, when they wake up, they will go and sleep. They, they will start casting out their food. They, we, we, we have got to a point that we no longer trust ourselves. Who did this to us? Sin, all manner 
mass of troubles all over the world. Look at the killings. Look at kidnap. You cannot travel from one location to another. If you want to travel from Lagos to Ekiti, you will be reciting Psalm 23. You cannot sleep and close your two eyes. Kidnappers everywhere. What is this one? Killing everywhere. The kid, you see, some people were traveling around the kitty. And they got to a place, kidnapper stopped them. And in the presence of the son, they shot the mother. They killed her. And then they kidnapped the man. They took him away, the husband. Look at that boy. He's looking. He said, you killed my mother right before me. A lot of children are victims of what I'm saying. You see, oh, sin, wickedness everywhere. Wickedness everywhere. Some people will steal money in government. They will come to church and do thanksgiving. What is this one? It is in this generation that we are now hearing that snakes are swallowing money in millions. Gorillas swallowing money. And they will, they, will, they, will, they will clean their mouth, come to church. You think you are and you want to be fruitful? Is this how to be fruitful? to repent if that word of God will be fulfilled in our lives. Brethren, there is no crazy year court that is in the world right now that has not entered the church. And we are looking. There is no crazy worldly dances that is in the world that has not entered the church. When Skelewu entered the world, he came to the church. When Bessel came, it entered the church. When Makosa came, it entered the church. And, and we thought, God, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You want to be fruitful, make up your mind. Let's stand on our feet. Can we just lift up our two hands, everybody? Just ask God to have mercy on you. God will, God will test your work with fire. He will test your work. He will test my work with fire. Reward is coming. If you are fruitful, reward is coming. Look at the life of our daddy here. Serving God day and night. Today you will hear it's in one country. Another time you will hear it. It is not that, it's not that it doesn't have now he doesn't want to read it is because there is a reward that is coming there is a reward coming there is reward coming lift up your two hands everybody and say lord i do away with sin i do away with wickedness i do away with disobedience those of you that has found you have found that you will never forgive somebody in your life Confess and ask God to have mercy on you. The hands of the Lord is not shutting that it cannot save. It is in your hand. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Lift up your two hands, everybody. I send the power of Jesus to you wherever you are. And I say, if you have prayed that prayer sincerely from your heart, let God have mercy on you. from today be fruitful everything that has tied you down up to now in the name of Jesus they catch fire let the Holy Ghost rest upon you the Lord bless and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you the Lord be gracious unto you in the name of Jesus Christ we have prayed God bless you.
praise and glory. Can we rise on our feet as we worship God? Can we rise on our feet as we worship our maker tonight? Can we rise on our feet as we lift our hands and worship? Father, be glorified. Hallelujah. Can we rise on our feet all over this place and just raise our hands and just worship God tonight? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jehovah, the man of war. His mercies endure forever and ever.
Jesus. 